Check Your Leader TV. Today we're reviewing O Group, released by Ricewitz Press 2020, written by David C.R. Brown. Um, now, if you look in my uh, playlist, you'll say I've already done a very brief summary or a brief review of O Group, but this time I'm going to do a little bit more detailed uh, review, and I'm going to be using the same system that they uh, they use over at Little Wars TV. It's the same system that I used when I did a rules review of Live Free or Die. So, um, and I like the system. Uh, so credit to the guys over at Little Wars TV. Um, basically, the, the rules review is broken down into five categories. Uh, presentation, playability, uh, mechanics, uh, historical flavor, and support. And each of these is weighted. 10% uh, for um, presentation. 30% for each of the playability and the mechanics, and then 20% for historical flavor, and finally 10% for support. So the first thing we're gonna to have to ask is, what is O-Group, and at what level of uh, combat are these rules trying to repl replicate on the tabletop? So they're pitched at uh, playing at battalion level in World War II. So essentially, you play the, the role of a battalion commander or a battle group commander uh, controlling infantry companies uh, with uh, supported arms, like uh, you know, maybe you might have a tank troop, tank platoon, or a tank squadron attached. You'll have indirect fire assets. Uh, you have your own organic battalion mortars. You have uh, direct support artillery, maybe an artillery battery. You also have the possibility of accessing support um, at the regimental or divisional level. Um, so it's it's a set of rules uh, aimed at battalion level. So you are a battalion commander and your manoeuvre elements are essentially platoons um, um, and tank troops. Um, and they are grouped into companies. So that's what O Group is and that's what it purports to allow you to play on the tabletop. Okay, presentation. Um, the rules themselves are released by Ricewitz Press, which you can obtain uh, through Two Fat Lardies. Um, I'm sure you can pick them up through other retailers and the like. But I got my rules directly from the Two Fat Lardies. And I, um, there's, there's some, there are various options for purchasing. You can purchase a complete bundle, which is the rules, the PDF and tokens. You can buy just the rules with a PDF. You can buy the rules with the tokens or you can buy just the rule book itself or just the PDF. If you go for the whole hog, you're looking at around about 37 pounds, which I think is a, that's probably around about uh, 70, 75 Australian dollars. Um, or you can go the budget option, which is just the PDF, which is about 16 pounds. And if you get just the, the hard copy book, you're looking at around about 26 pounds, which is about $50. Um, and it is a quality product. It's uh, uh, well bound. I, I, I've had mine since 2020, which when it was released, and um, I haven't had any problems with it yet. Um, there is one minor issue, and that is that the pages have been numbered with the numbers closest to the spine, which is kind of silly. Uh, and I'm sure this isn't the uh, fault of the author, but rather of the printer. Um, if you get the PDF copy and you print the PDF out, as I have done, and then you go get it printed, and um, I've had mine uh, ring bound, the problem uh, is taken care of, and the numbers are where they should be for the pages, which is on the outer edges of the pages. Um, the tokens, if you decide to get the token set, you get, uh, I think it's about 10 order tokens, three company commander tokens, several of these... Um, uh, hit marker and suppression tokens, and then you get various damaged, bogged, and hesitant tokens. Um, I've painted mine up. They come initially just uh, as you see them here, and that's perfectly functional, but um, I got myself a, a painting pen and I, I, I tarted mine up. The um, quick reference sheet that comes with the rules, uh, it's a quality product, glossy finish, uh, you can get the P, uh, you can get the quick reference sheet uh, from the various forums and just download it. So that's an option. And 
If you do that, you get something like this, which is indistinguishable really from um, the, 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 the uh, quick reference sheet that comes with the rule book. The rule book itself, it's well laid out. It follows a logical sequence, easy to read. I had no problems understanding it. I understand that uh, some people, uh, especially uh, Americans, have uh, sometimes they have difficulty in understanding what the or comprehending the way things are written in the United Kingdom. That's understandable. It's not. It's not a slight on um, on uh, uh, people's uh, ability uh, to read. It's simply a fact. Um, comprehension, grammar, the like. There are subtle differences, uh, and they're uh, enough to cause some issues. But uh, as an Australian, I. Found no problems at all reading this. Um, there are ample uh, eye candy throughout the book. There's also plenty of tables throughout the book, and these tables uh, are then all consolidated in the quick reference sheets. Now, there are nice illustrations throughout the book um, as well. Uh, for example, here defining what are the frontal arcs for self propelled anti tank guns, tanks, and um, assault guns. Uh, also explaining what a flank shot is. There's also army lists, and we have army lists for uh, for the British, Germans, Russians, and the United States uh, um, for, uh, Army. Um, and there's a point system. So for those who like to have um, uh, points-based games, there are um, uh, details on what a battalion costs in points values, um, how much an infantry company or uh, extra supports cost, and uh, armoured fighting vehicles, half-tracks and the like. There's also a section on optional rules, which I always like, um, you know, to add a little bit more um, flavour to your games. And there is also a scenario in the book. Now, there's only one scenario, and that's, I guess this is one of my... My only other criticisms is there is only one scenario uh, in the book, but it is an introductory scenario. And obviously, if you would start to, to put more scenarios in the rules books, that would add to the page count, that would blow out the costs. So I'm conscious of the fact that it's a balance between, um, you know, how many pages you're going to have in your rules and um, keeping the whole package uh, at a reasonable price. Uh, so, uh, generally speaking, the rule book itself, really, really nice. So for presentation, I'm gonna give O Group an eight out of 10. So that's presentation out of the way. Let's have a look at playability now. These rules are uh, written, I think, with uh, the 15 millimeter and below in mind, but you can play quite uh, easily in 20 mil and all the ranges are provided uh, and the measurement, the distances are provided uh, in uh, inches with the uh, number in brackets pertaining to 20 millimeter or 170 second scale uh, uh, miniatures and the number to the left of those brackets obviously for 15 mil and below. So what do you need to play the game? Well, you need uh, bases of infantry and some uh, model armoured fighting vehicles and model artillery pieces and the like. Mind you, um, the, the indirect fire assets, so your, your uh, artillery batteries and your mortars, really aren't that, that necessary. You don't really need to have them on the table. Uh, but um, they do make handy little tokens. So, and I place these at the, uh, next to my uh, battalion headquarters. And so when I use a when I do a fire mission, I simply pick one up and take it away, sh sh uh, indicating that battery is no longer available. So you don't really need the indirect fire support assets, but you do need obviously uh, bases of infantry. Um, each base represents a squad or a section, um, and each armored fighting vehicle uh, also represents a tank, uh, a tank troop or tank section. Um, it is somewhat abstracted because each of these bases, which I have, I have four figures on, but you could get away with, you know, one, two or three, I guess, um, uh, represents a squad. And a squad can be anything from, you know, eight or nine up to you know, 12, 
13 or 14 men in a squad. Um, each tank model represents um, anything from uh, one or two tanks to um, four or five. Um, same, same for uh, direct fire assets such as uh, infantry guns and anti-tank guns. Um, it represents, you know, two or two, three, four guns. So there is some slight abs uh, abstraction in the, the rules, but I'm, I've got no problem with that. There's no fixed base size, so uh, that makes it handy. Uh, that's, that's handy for people entering uh, O Group for the first time. As long as they're similar um, and, uh, you know, you should be fine to go. I've even played uh, using uh, my troops base using these standard Flames of War bases against people who've used bases that are somewhat different, and we seem to be able to have games no problem whatsoever. So in summary, um, uh, for playability, um, I think uh, O Group uh, ticks a lot of boxes. I, I found it very easy to learn. I found it very easy to teach. Uh, the first game I played uh, teaching someone after the first uh, first turn, after set up prelims and the first turn, the, the individual I was playing with um, had a good grip on the rules and only occasionally uh, were, you know, did you, did you need to ask questions? Um, so it's, it's uh, a fairly straightforward entry. Um, I mean, you don't even really need, the, the reality is you could get the rules and rather than using miniatures, you could just use uh, little tokens, um, you know, little counters representing squads and the like, very Kriegspiel, so to speak. Um, so for playability, I'm giving O Group a score of, Eight out of ten. Okay, so the next category we're going to look at is mechanics. Uh, but what I'm going to look at predominantly is the deployment system that, that it uses, how you set the game up uh, and prepare the troops on the table. Uh, the command eye system, uh, the combat patrol system, and also how sh uh, direct fire and spotting is handled uh, in O Group. Because these are the mechanisms that really, uh, for me, stand out and make this such a good set of rules. So the first mechanism we're going to look at now is deploying the battalion or in layman speak how do you get actually get your troops on the table to start a game and essentially the way it works is uh, rather than just having troops set up at uh, opposite ends of the table and just you're putting your models and your toys on the table and they just have at each other you roll your command dice and you can a battalion if it's a regular battalion you're gonna have nine command dice um, at the start of the game, you each side rolls their command dice. Now, ones are bad for the defender. If a defender rolls ones, um, each one uh, that he rolls up to a maximum of three is that many turns of interdiction that's falling on him that is preventing him or hindering, not preventing, but, but hindering and making it difficult for him to get troops on the table. Uh, uh, if he rolls um, two through to four, he can put combat patrols and these are basically spawning points or jump off points on the table and he can deploy them uh, in his uh, company areas which is another great mechanism because you, you have to def de de uh, de define which uh, 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 company where company boundaries are but anyway twos to four you can place um, uh, uh, combat patrols out on the table behind your forward de forward uh, defensive line. And if you roll a five or six, you can put units in ambush. And that's simply, you just note, 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 um, write down uh, where you have a unit, uh, whether it be an anti-tank gun or an anti-tank team or a platoon um, hiding in ambush. For the attacker, um, if he rolls ones, um, if he rolls one one, the defender is, has, had a, has had a platoon neutralized. If he rolls two ones, he's had a platoon neutralized, plus he loses one of his uh, battalion command points. And these are uh, points that uh, each side uses to uh, help uh, gain the initiative. And if he rolls three ones, if the attacker rolls three ones, then the defender loses a platoon, plus a, a battalion command point and a section of the defender's choice. Uh, 
two to four. These are combat patrols that the attacker places out, uh, which represent these forward recon elements um, going forward, trying to find um, uh, avenues of approach to the enemy's uh, uh, objectives, uh, objectives within the enemy lines. And if you roll a five or a six, these are units that have already, they've got their act together and they're deployed on the table, ready to advance. For both sides, for every six you roll, that is a, command, a battalion command point. And these battalion command points, as I'll explain later, uh, help towards gaining the, the initiative. So the deployment system is brilliant. Uh, it, it, it adds uh, a real level of realism uh, to the game uh, and uh, it throws that friction in right from the get-go and makes you feel like you're struggling, um, you're, you're fighting not only the enemy, but the, that friction that Clausewitz speaks of. Okay, so the ne next mechanism we're gonna look at now is the command die system. Um, essentially what happens is at the start of each turn, depending on uh, how many, uh, the, the status of your battalion, you'll have a certain amount of command dies. For a regular battalion, essentially you're going to start with nine dice and you'll gradually lose uh, command dice during the course of the game as you suffer casualties. Regardless, you roll, these, you roll the dice and you do this simultaneously. For every one that you roll, you, you get nothing, you get no order. And this, this is a handy mechanism for generating friction. If you roll three ones, you're going to have a company go hesitant. And that's randomized. You just simply roll to see which company has gone hesitant. Uh, for every two to five you roll, you generate a company order. And these orders are then given out um, to your platoons um, so that they can do things. And if it's a fairly simple thing, it's only one order. If it's a more complicated thing, it's going to require extra orders. Uh, and not only do you give them to your platoons, but you might give come up company orders to your forward observer. And when he calls in a fire mission, um, the first time he, he, he puts in a call for, for a fire mission, it's going to cost him two orders. Subsequently, if he engages the same target, it's only going to cost him one. Um, and so these, this is a really uh, nifty and simple mechanic for uh, you to, uh, to simulate the kind of command friction that you could expect to have to, to cope with as a battalion commander in contact with the enemy. If you roll a six, that's a battalion order. And these orders go to generate a, a point in your command post. Um, and I think it's up to, a, if I can remember correctly, up to a maximum of six that you can have in your pool. These command points help you gain the initiative. So um, once you've rolled your command dice, you then determine which side has the initiative. You roll 2d6 and you add together to that, 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 that roll, you add any command points that you might have in your pool. So as the battalion commander, you're confronted with these kind of situations where you have to decide, do I keep my pool as full as I can to ensure that I keep maintaining the initiative? Or do I dive into that command pool at battalion to try to influence the battle in, the, in that particular, at that particular time and place, uh, knowing that that's going to lessen my chance of uh, obtaining the initiative going forward. And this I really do like because um, what you find in on operations is eventually um, com uh, commanders will gain the initiative and they will and, and, and try to maintain the momentum, but eventually it reaches a culminating point where, um, you know, the battalion is being pushed and pushed and pushed and it's basically gets to a point where it, it's just like the, 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 the command and control system is breaking down, not due through enemy action as much as just command exhaustion. And that's reflected in the use of these command dice. So now we're going to talk about combat patrols. Now, what are combat patrols? The combat patrols represent um, the, the, the platoon, uh, forward scouts or scouts from the company or battalion recon platoon 
uh, who are going forward trying to find uh, avenues of approach uh, to enemy positions. Uh, in the case of an attacker and in the defender, uh, they, they, they can represent, uh, again, the same types of troops, the, the battalion recon, or simply standing patrols, or areas where uh, your troops are basically lying in wait. Um, you can use them in the you use them in the game predominantly as spawning points or jump off points for your troops. So you move your combat patrols forward until they get to a point where they're within a well, within a certain distance of the enemy. They can't move any further, and from there you can then deploy troops, assuming that the enemy's own combat patrols are not pushing yours back or neutralizing them. You can also use them to. Uh, 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 as deception you, you could you can you can as a player uh, keep pushing combat patrols in a certain area on the table uh, and the enemy could be thinking okay he's he's moving his combat patrols he's getting ready to um, uh, deploy troops on my left flank for example but it could be a feint you might not be that might not be your intention at all so they provide this uh, opportunity for deception fog of war um, and also realistically um, uh, simulate how troops actually deploy on the battlefield. So yes, combat patrols, great mechanism. And uh, again, it's one of those things. The only other thing that's similar I've seen is in uh, Two Fat Lardy's Chain of Command, where you uh, have jump off points. Um, and again, combat patrols, they just add another layer of, of tactical uh, nuance and finesse into uh, this game. And they really are uh, a, a neat mechanism. Very, very good. Next, I want to have a look at the, the, the spotting dice, uh, the way it's used in um, O Group. Traditionally, what you do when you're playing a game, uh, you know, where concealment or um, any kind of World War II type of game, when you engage targets, one of the first things you have to do is you've got to determine whether or not you're, you have spotted them, uh, which requires a little bit of um, uh, uh, the, the suspension of disbelief because insofar as you can see your miniatures on the table and you think to yourself, well, I can see them but you have to abstract uh, the fact that maybe your troops on the table don't see them very well. And so you have to go through a spotting mechanism. Uh, you have, uh, normally it's a, a table, you go through, yeah, can we spot them, you roll a dice, yeah, I've spotted them, and then you pr proceed to engaging them. In O Group, this is handled much, much, uh, in a much simpler way, and yet a very effective way. Essentially, it's as simple as this. The firing unit generates a certain amount of uh, shooting dice, and unless the troops are in the open, uh, you then roll a spotting dice as well. And it's simply a four, five, or a six, you've spotted, a one, two, or three, you haven't. So you roll your dice, uh, and in the, let's, let's assume that you've uh, not spotted them. You, can, you still fire at them, but it's assumed that your firing is less effective. And so, the enemy now saves on three, four, five, or six. Whereas if you do spot them, if you are successful in your spotting dice roll, they can only save on a four, five, or a six. So you roll your dice together with your spotting dice, you register your hits, you declare whether or not they're spotted or not, and then the enemy rolls to save. And it's that simple. And it's really, uh, it's, it, it just makes the game move along a lot better. Uh, a lot quicker, um, and it, it it really simply makes sense. Troops in the open are automatically spotted, and if they're in any kind of cover, then you have to roll a spotting dice. And again, it's it's this it's, it's this not really knowing what's how it's going to play out. It's this friction that's put into the game because um, that's what makes the game feel realistic. Um, that level of friction. And so again, the spotting dice uh, mechanism is is really is quite brilliant. I'm uh, in regards to mechanics, I'm giving um, O Group a nine.
Okay, so that brings us on to our last two categories, which is uh, historical flavor and support. I'm not going to labor on too much. For historical flavor, I think O Group oozes historical flavor for the world for World War II period. You could easily use adapt these rules for the Korean War or uh, wars in the early 1960s, I think. Um, and I think you could easily use them for maybe the Spanish Civil War. Um, I, I suspect you, people might even be able to adopt them for World War One, But regardless, it, they really do feel like... Uh, I, I, I feel that when you're playing this game, you're confronted with the kind of issues that a World War II battalion or battle group commander or comp group commander might be dealing with. And so for that... Again, for historical flavour, I give O Group uh, 9 out of 10. Which brings us on, on, on to our final category, which is support. Now, there's already been uh, two campaign books uh, produced for O Group. Uh, there is a uh, Normandy campaign group, uh, a campaign, uh, and I believe there's a 1940 uh campaign book. There's also uh, scenarios that are available. Uh, I think there's at least one scenario available via um, uh, uh, the, the Lard magazine, which comes out each year. So I think you're going to find ongoing scenarios produced there. And I also su suspect that Ricewitz Press will continue to produce um, um, uh, campaign or scenario books for this. So, so far, the rules been have been around for almost two years now. There's already been two campaign books produced. Uh, there are campaigns, like I said, in Lard mag uh, games in Lard magazine or scenarios in Lard magazine that you can get. There's uh, a good, healthy uh, couple of forums. There's the General Brigade Forum, which is... Um, uh, Dave Brown's own forum, and there's also a forum on the Two Fat Lardies uh, website. So there's two two forums there, uh, and I've placed that placed questions there and had them answered pretty quickly. And there, of course, is a healthy Facebook community for for O Group. Uh, at least two that I know of. There's uh, the O Group face uh, Facebook group, and there's the O O Group Australia. Uh, or Australian O Group Facebook uh, page. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's there's other ones as well. Um, there are plenty of files that are being produced. One in particular, O Group Vehicle and Guns List that you can find. You can find this on the uh, the O Group Facebook page. I recommend uh, you go there. And if you're not on Facebook, and I don't blame you, it's a, it's a pretty toxic environment, quite frankly. What uh, we subject ourselves to. But um, even if you can't go onto that, uh, you don't want to go onto that uh, anti-social media, uh, there are, I'm sure you, you'll have a friend that, that can go on there for you and obtain these files. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're also available via um, uh, the forums. And these are really, really good. Uh, they're called the O-Group Vehicles and Guns List. And basically every vehicle you could imagine is listed there. It tells you um, whether or not, uh, it tells you what kind of gun it has, the HE, the AT rating, the armor rating on it, the speed, the year, um, uh, cost in points, uh, and there's also notes in relation to them. And they cover uh, British vehicles, American vehicles, uh, Germans, Russians, uh, France, Italy, Poland, uh, Japan, United States. Yeah, so pretty much any vehicle you, you could imagine. And if you can't find the vehicle, you could, there's nothing wrong with you making your own stats that you feel are appropriate for that vehicle. So in regards to support, I've given O Group a score of eight. So that's a grand total if you add them all together, 85 points. Okay, so that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good score. And clear, I, I shouldn't have to say this, but I recommend that if you're interested in battalion level wargaming in the Second World War, uh, in 20 millimeter, 172nd scale or below, I think uh, O Group would be a damn fine choice. So go out and uh, grab yourself a copy. 
And we'll wrap it up there. And until next time, um, I'll see you around. Yubiquay.